Hello, my name's Chris Lovejoy. I'm a junior doctor working in London. We're particularly interested in technology and artificial intelligence. And today we're talking about how to be productive on the ward. From talking to other students at Cambridge and also from other universities, a lot of people say that time on the wards often feels quite unproductive. So today I'm going to share some tips about how we can be more productive on the ward. And this is something I really wish I knew um, when I first started clinical school because I found it quite a shock going from the preclinical side, which in Cambridge is three years of very academic scientific study, to then going to seeing patients where you're just thrown onto the ward and you're expected to find your way and work out what to do and work out how to learn. I remember walking onto the ward and seeing different people wearing different colour uniforms and not really knowing what was what. I didn't really know what a ward round was, um, I didn't know how the day was typically structured, I heard lots of terms and didn't really know what was going on essentially. And I found that kind of quite overwhelming as a, as a medical student. It took me quite a while to adjust to that. By the time I was finishing up at medical school, I had a much better idea of the kinds of things I should be doing on the ward and how to make the most of my time. But I really wish I'd known a bit more of this earlier. And I think it would have made that transition much easier. It's generally the case that time on the wards feels quite unproductive, particularly because the other aspect of learning medicine is all the academic content where you often have large volumes of new information that you have to learn and memorize. And the approach that you take to that is very much that you want to be as efficient as possible so that you can learn as much information and remember it so that you don't have to spend your whole life in the library trying to memorize things in order to pass the exams. But then when you come to the clinical side and being on the wards, it's much more difficult because it's much less directed. There's no clear syllabus. It's often not clear what the best thing to do with your time is at any moment. And it often feels quite unstructured. A key point to say is that hospitals are designed to treat patients, not to teach medical students. So here are four tips for being productive on the wards. The first point is to always have an objective. There's always a lot going on around the ward and it's not always clear what you should be doing and what the best place to go is and what the best kind of things to do. And I think it's very easy to be quite passive on the ward and just to follow doctors around, observe some things. And there is some benefit in doing that, but it's also quite easy to switch off. And I definitely noticed myself on many occasions just following a ward round, not really taking much in and probably not learning a lot from the experience. So I found it very useful to always have some kind of objective that I decided before I'd go onto the ward of a few things that I wanted to achieve while I was there. And this could be things like practicing some bloods, understanding how to interpret liver function test, how to understand the treatment of a particular type of disease. It could be to recognize the signs of a certain type of disease. From my fifth year onwards, I always had something in mind that I wanted to achieve every time I went onto the ward and it ended up being super useful. Maybe you join the ward round and because you want to listen to certain signs, on the ward round you notice that there's certain patients with um, signs that you want to learn how to pick up. So then you make a note on the handover sheet and you come back at the end of the ward round and you can examine those patients and learn to pick up those signs. Also then if there's a free moment, perhaps the doctors are all very busy, you can then go away and look at some patients' notes, looking at their blood tests, maybe they have some um, liver disease, and you can look at their blood test, try and interpret it, read a guide on interpreting liver function tests and teach yourself. And then perhaps if a doctor does become free, they can join in and give you a bit more teaching and that can be useful. But being very self-directed in these kind of settings is a really useful thing to do. And one useful prompt that I found for remembering what my objectives were and making sure that I set them in advance is I used to bring in a piece of paper every single day and I'd write six objectives on this piece of paper. So what I would do is I would take a piece of paper and I would fold it in half six times. This is to make it small enough to fit in my pocket. No, maybe fold it three times, not six times. Three times and then six things. And then on this, I would decide what are the six best things for me to do on that particular day. And that might be influenced by the ward that I'm on. It might be influenced by a certain exam that's coming up, skills that I feel I want to develop. Sometimes my objectives wouldn't be ward related. As an example, finalize an article that I was writing. Because if I had a free moment and there didn't really seem to be anything going on in the ward and there was no doctors that were free to teach me, then I could just find a computer or go to the library and work on another task. So this is my list of six. And the nice thing about this is I can keep it in my pocket at all times and be involved with the ward and everything that's going on. And then if at any moment there's a quiet moment or I feel like I'm not being too productive, I can just take it out and see, okay, these are my objectives. Which one can I achieve right now? And you get quite a satisfying feeling as well when you cross it off. Having the sheet like this, I then also would sometimes make notes on the inside and on the back. And because it's on a small piece of paper, I don't want to have too many of these lying around. So when I get home, I would review the content on the inside of here, write it up onto a computer, review it, maybe read something in a textbook, and then I would just throw the sheets away. Sometimes I would copy across objectives to the next day. If it's something I really wanted to do but didn't have a chance to do, then I'd copy across the next day. So the second point is linking your experiences to your reading. So in medicine, there's these two components 
that you need to learn. You need to learn the academic content. So you need to understand a certain number of diseases, their treatments, the pathophysiology, and how you would manage those patients. And then you also need to understand the clinical side, which is how to recognize those conditions, how to pick up the signs and symptoms of a certain condition, how to tell how ill someone is, whether they're severely unwell or only moderately unwell, because they could have shortness of breath, but that could be very bad or it could be very mild. And you get that from a clinical impression. Now, I found it very useful to link the two. Firstly, if I was on the ward and I saw a patient with a particular condition, then I would use that as a prompt to try and recall uh, what I know about that condition and maybe identify things that I don't know about that condition. Let's say, for example, I saw someone with hepatitis B infection. I would see this patient and I would ask myself, okay, hepatitis B, what are some of the risk factors? What are some of the signs and symptoms that you might expect to see? What investigations would you do? What kind of treatment would the patient be on? I would then look at the patient's notes and see, okay, what kind of treatment are they on? Does that match what I thought they should be on? What kind of investigations have they had? Does that match what I thought they should have had? And work through that case, but to use my initial thoughts first and then to analyze the case itself and see if I did have an accurate understanding of the situation. Another top tip is if you can get a handover sheet because a handover sheet is incredibly useful as a medical student just so that you can know what all the patients have and some a couple of key bullet points on each patient so that when you're going around the ward round you have a much better idea of what's going on and when you're just looking around and seeing patients in general you can pick up a lot just from looking at the handover sheet and looking at the patients and linking your experiences to your reading works in both directions one thing i found very useful is to go home and read about just a couple of conditions every day or a couple of interesting things that i saw and that's where my sheet came in handy because i would have a lot of scribbled notes that i'd written on here throughout the day so at the end of the day i could look at my notes and I'd have a couple of key conditions and look those up and just make a few notes. And another thing that's quite cool about this is that if you read about a condition after seeing a patient, then that gives you an anecdote for remembering that particular condition. And evidence shows that it's we're much better at remembering things when there's a story attached to it. It's much easier to remember that 40-year-old lady who had multiple sclerosis who presented with these symptoms versus I read a paragraph in a textbook about multiple sclerosis and what to expect. And one thing I also found useful was on my phone, I have all of my medical notes that I've made digitally on my OneNote. So at any moment in time, if there's a condition that I see and I recall as much as I can about that condition, then I can take my phone out and check the notes on, let's say, COPD, and I can see all of the notes and see what else did I miss. Okay, I'd forgotten about this particular aspect of treatment, but before doing that, I would recall as much as I could on that condition that I saw on the ward. And that's been shown to be a very effective technique for ensuring that you memorize things. The next piece of advice is to tag on to good teachers. A good teacher is firstly, someone who is good at teaching, but also someone who is keen to teach, who's friendly and willing to take the time to teach you things. So this can make a huge difference because often as a medical student, when you're on the wards, you're very much at the whim of other people to direct you, tell you what would be useful to do and help you to get involved because you're coming onto a ward where you don't necessarily know the patients particularly well and you don't know well what's going on. Whereas the doctor who works on that ward is going to understand what is the structure of the ward, what's the daily routine like, when is the nurse doing handover, when is so-and-so getting their CT scan or chest x-ray. So having someone who works on the ward and knows the ward well, who also wants to teach you, is a very useful thing to do. So you should tag on to those people and just learn as much as you can from them as possible. And the next point is to be opportunistic. Now what do I mean by this? I mean learning the structure of the ward, what's going on, when there's going to be useful things for you to be involved with, because that's key. Every hospital runs slightly differently and there's going to be different things happening at different times on different wards. Ideally, you want to be in the best place in the hospital at any particular time. Now that's not easy. So what I would recommend doing is as soon as you arrive on a new ward or a new rotation, ask whoever you can, as much as you can, about how the ward is run. When does the ward round start? When are their clinics? Where are the clinics? Are there theatres if it's a surgical ward? When do they operate? What kind of operations do they do? Who operate? How is that arranged? Just find out as much as you can about how things are run so that you can then use that to decide. Now it's really useful to make notes at this point because you're not going to remember it I've seen a lot of the times at the start of the placement, people would get told when all the dates and the times and the clinics and stuff are. But if you didn't make a note, then you just forget it and you'd spend the next five weeks on your rotation, not really sure exactly when things are happening. But if you know the structure of the ward, then that enables you to be very targeted with deciding when am I going to go to this? When am I going to go to theatre? When am I going to go see patients? When am I going to go to clinic? Etc. And this enables you to make your own schedule so you can decide when you want to do all of these things and when you're going to go do your own independent study. Sometimes there's an assumption that you should spend all of your time on the wards as a medical student helping out with the team, uh, working similar sorts of hours to the other doctors there, but actually it's not necessarily the best thing for you to be doing with your time. If you're learning a lot from the ward, then it's great and you should stay there, but it's also important to make sure that you are getting things out of being there. 
and that you're not just functioning as service provision. Understand the structure of the ward to make your own schedule so that you work on your schedule rather than the ward's schedule. And one thing that's quite useful is you can plan to go to a clinic, for example, between 10 a.m. and 12 and have something scheduled after that, like maybe you're planning to go to theater or you're planning to go to the ward and meet one of the junior doctors. What you can do is go to that clinic and say, oh, by the way, I have something scheduled at 12 and then you stay from 10 until 12 and you see three or four or five patients of a particular condition and then the person running the clinic already knows that you're going to go and then you can go elsewhere and learn something else and that just helps increase the productivity rather than sitting for a full clinic even though if you feel you've you've got the general gist of the clinic you don't you're not staying out of obligation and sometimes I think you will just have to deal with the fact that you feel like you're being inefficient and it can be easy to be frustrated about that if you're coming from a productivity mindset and you feel you're not like necessarily getting a lot out of those. One thing I would say is that you can actually be getting things out of the experiences in general rather than a specific quantifiable measurable impact. And I wrote an article on this subject, so if you're interested in reading that, there'll be a link in the description below. And finally, just to say not to beat yourself up. If you're finding it quite difficult on the wards and you're feeling like you're always getting in the way and you're not necessarily gaining a lot from being there, it's easy to have those feelings. I know that I did when I first started clinical medicine. I got quite bummed out about uh, the fact I didn't really feel like I fitted in on the ward and I was never sure what I should be doing. But partly that's just part and parcel of being a medical student. With time, I think you become more confident on the ward, particularly as you're given more responsibilities. Everybody who works in a hospital has very busy stressful jobs and they're often just focusing on that trying to make sure their patients are well and trying to make sure they can get home on time by finishing all their work and sometimes that will mean that a medical student is left standing there and no one really looks after them don't take it personally it also helps to be proactive and confident you have every right to be there in hospital you've got into medical school you've passed the exams you have every right to be there and every right to learn from the hospital so that's everything for today i hope you enjoyed the video i'll be posting more videos on similar themes as well as technology artificial intelligence startups and general thoughts about medicine so if you're interested in those kinds of topics consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next video